Hello and welcome to my third sew along for Nomi Patterns. I'm so excited about this pattern, ME2073. View A is the crop top and it's fully lined and it has a twist detail in the center as well as adjustable straps. View B is the skirt and so the skirt details include a drop waist which I am so obsessed with this feature for 2024. And on the yoke detail, it's hard to see on this photo, but there are pointed yoke details. So there's a pointed yoke here and a pointed yoke here. It's pretty, a slight point. Um, it's easier to see it on the line art details. So if you can see the pointed yoke detailing there, uh, it does include gathers and then an invisible zip on the side. What I love about this pattern is it's just fun and flirty and to me screams spring. I took my photos out in the field because that's just what I envision frolicking through fields. Not that many people do that, but you know, frolicking through fields, going to the beach, having a picnic, which is like an ode to the gingham print. Um, I just think this is a, such a fun, versatile piece. You can hack the yoke to not be pointed. There's so many things you could do with this pattern. I also think it would be really cute if you had a contrast. So maybe you did like, for instance, maybe I would have made this in a solid black or white and then had a print on the bottom or a print on the top and a solid on the bottom. So I think it's gonna be really fun. You can mix and match this garment to however you like. Obviously I did my prints together and I did my solids together but you could mix and match, which I think is super cute. So I love this pattern. It is probably one of my favorites thus far and I can't wait to see what you do with it. For this video, we will be sewing view A, which is the top. ME2073, view A is the top and view B is the bottom. There's no variety between these two fabrics except to show it in a plain versus a printed look. Um, the tops are the same, the skirts are the same, nothing's changed. This pattern comes in sizes 8 through 26. You can find all of your body measurements and finished garment measurements here on the back side of the pattern. Suggested fabrics for this pattern include batiks, chambray, charmeuse, cotton lawn, cotton blends, gauze, gingham, linen blends, poplin, and silky types. You can also use those same fabrics for your lining. This pattern also calls for lightweight and fusible facing, as well as two zippers, one five inch for view A and one nine inch for the skirt in view B. The five inch zipper is a separating zipper and the nine inch zipper is an invisible zipper. This pattern also calls for one pair of bra strap sliders and rings. View A has four pattern pieces, which include pattern piece one, this is the front. You're going to cut two for your main fabric and two for your lining. Pattern piece number two are your back pieces. Again, cut two in your main fabric, two in your lining. Pattern piece three are your shoulder straps, cut two. And pattern piece four, which are your loops, you're going to cut two. Starting with view A, we are going to fold our straps in half and do a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, you'll go ahead and use a spaghetti turner to turn your spaghetti strap inside out. Now we are going to take the main fabric for piece one, and we are going to attach our straps to the main fabric. So I put little notches right here, but you can do the little dots, but with my fabric being so dark, I couldn't see the dots, so I did notches. But we're going to place our straps right there and we are going to stay stitch it down. So do this for both sides of your main fabric pattern piece one. Next, we're gonna take pattern piece four, fold it in half, and then stitch quarter inch on each raw edge. Then we'll turn them inside out like we did the spaghetti straps. These are gonna be our loops, which we'll attach to pattern piece number two. All right, now that we've flipped our loops inside out, we're going to fold them in half. It's here where I forgot to add my O-ring while I was making this tutorial. So please don't be like me and add your O-ring to these loops now. And once you've folded them in half, we're gonna go up to our back piece, which is pattern piece number two. And again, I notched instead of drawing dots just because it's hard to see on the dark fabric. So I notched and I'm gonna go ahead and place 
it in between the notches. Once I have it pinned properly, I'm gonna go ahead and stay stitch. Again, this is my main fabric pattern piece too, not my lining. I'm gonna do the same thing here, fold it in half. And then I'm going to pin and stay stitch. Next, we are going to attach our five inch separating zipper to our back panel piece. Now, five inch separating zippers aren't that common. I actually had these customized um, through a website called Zipper Shipper. And so they're not like endorsed or sponsorship or anything. I paid my own money for it, but I was able to customize and get it into the five inch length you could also do it by simply just removing the teeth and then repurposing um, the, the, the metal up at the top. And so that's also an option. I don't have those tools in my house. So for me, it was just way more convenient to pay a couple extra dollars to get it resized. And so this is a five inch separating zipper. So as you can see, they completely separate at the bottom. And then we're going to attach one side to one back panel and the other side to the other back panel. So go ahead and get your zipper ready, whether you have to do the teeth or you've pre-purchased one. All right, so like the illustration shows on the pattern directions, I just went ahead and did a stitch line just so it could help me place them correctly at the correct measurement. So here's my one separating zipper and I'm going to lay it down within the confines of those stitching. And then I'm going to go ahead and pin. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a stitch line here and attach this zipper. Now the directions tell us to sew along the center of the zipper, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. When it's attached, it should look like this with some of the zipper exposed because remember we did the stitch line down the middle of the zipper. Next, we are going to take the right front and fold it in half. You'll see notches up here. So what we're going to do is sew from the notch all the way down. We're not gonna, we're gonna leave this part open and you'll see why in a few steps. Once we have sewn in the stitch, we're going to open this up. And I like to press this open. So go ahead and make sure that when you open it, the seam allowance is open as well. So we're going to open up. We're going to open up that side we just did, making sure the seam allowance is open. And then we're going to connect the side seams. So we're going to take the back piece and connect the side seams. And we're going to go ahead and stitch 5 eighths of an inch down. Now we're going to repeat the same process to the lining for the right side. So again, we're going to leave this open where the notches are and sew 5 eighths all the way across. And then we're also going to take the back lining and attach it to the side seam here, matching notches. Now that we've sewn up our lining, we're going to take our main fabric and we're going to match it up with our lining. And we are going to sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. So as I said, now that it's all pinned, we're going to sew 5 eighths inch around the edge. We're going to leave this side open so we can turn it inside out. Now that we've sewn up 5 eighths of an inch, we're going to go ahead and flip this inside out. And it should look something like this. Next, we're going to take our left front piece and take our left front lining. And we're going to go ahead and pin them together just at the top. And we're going to sew it together 5 eighths of an inch all the way from one side to the other just at the top where the strap is. All right, so now that we've pinned it together, go ahead and stitch 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, this next part is pretty tricky, and I know that their directions don't really say to do this, but this is what I did while I was working on my samples. So I'm going to put a safety pin 
right here on the front edge because what we're going to be doing is we're going to thread it through the tiny little openings right here on our other piece. And it's kind of hard to shove this whole fabric bit into there. Now, if you see the photo, we're here on step 13. And so what we're going to do is shove that end in through those two holes. So I like to use the safety pin to help guide that piece through the two little holes. Okay, so I have fed the safety pin through both little holes and now I'm gonna slowly pull the garment through. And so you can see with the safety pin, it's so much easier than just trying to shove it all in there. So you can see I've pulled it through. It's gonna open up. Here's the edge. Okay, now that we've pulled it through, what I've gone ahead and done is connect the notch right here so you can hardly see it because it's got the twisty part right here. But we're gonna sew from that notch all the way to here and we're gonna do 5 eighths of an inch to close it up. After we have connected those pieces, we're gonna go ahead and fold this in on itself. Be careful not to catch the straps. And we are going to connect these pieces here. So this is what it should look like when it's pinned. Again, we're sewing all the way to the notches here at the twist part, 5 eighths of an inch. All right, now that we've completed that, stitch line we're going to go ahead and pull this inside out and now we have our top with our straps at the top and our completed knot in the middle next we're going to grab our back left lining with our back left main fabric and we're going to place the two together we're going to stitch five eighths of an inch across remember when we go to pin it, we're gonna open this up five eighths and open up the other side five eighths and then stitch five eighths of an inch all the way around. All right, so we've pinned the back pieces together. We are going to leave both these sides unpinned and unsewn. Remember to flip it over five eighths of an inch and we're gonna go sew across five eighths and five eighths. Now that we've sewn that up, we're gonna leave these two sides open and what we're going to do is take the zippered side and we're gonna slide it in through the back piece because what we want to do is stitch this up together. What we're going to do is match notches. So you can see on the inside there's notches here and we're gonna match those up to the notches that are on the outer. Go ahead and pin all layers together. And this will take some time and finagling. Once you've pinned all layers together, not just matching, you're gonna go ahead and sew it 5 eighths of an inch. We are going to go ahead and pull that inside out. And it should line up perfectly. The next step requires hand sewing, so you're gonna slip stitch the lining of the zipper to the zipper, and that way it's a clean finish on the front side. So you're gonna do that to both zippers. Alternatively, if you want, you can just do a top stitch and just do it really closely. No one will be able to see the stitch unless they're looking really closely, so it just depends on your preference. There's no other top stitching anywhere else in the, the bra top, so the crop top, so um, it's just your personal preference. If you wanna have it be clean, go ahead and slip stitch. If you don't mind a top stitch, then go ahead and do that now. The last step is connecting the sliders with the straps and the o-rings 
So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I've just made sure my strap is not twisted. I'm going to go from the top to the bottom and pull my strap in this way. Then I'm going to loop it through the O-ring and I'm gonna bring it back through the bottom of the slider and then sew it. So let me show you what that looks like when it's finished. So this is how it will look on the right side. And then on the wrong side, what I've done is wrapped it around the O-ring and I've pulled it back through. Now what I'm going to do is just stitch right here on these bottom two so it stays. So I'm not getting the front of the strap, I'm just getting this part and this part and I'm going to stitch it here to secure it and then do that to the other side and then we're finished. And that's it. Once so you've done it to both sides, you are finished with your top. Well done, we have finished. I hope you enjoyed this sew along. Please tag me in your creations at Miss Alicia Grace. I'd love to see what you do and how you put your flair on my third design for Nomi. Until next season, 